Okay, well, see, this question is actually a very easy question. Uh, the question says that I will not read the entire question. I will just tell you that a particle is thrown with an initial speed of u0 at angle theta with the horizontal. It follows this projectile motion, starts the ground over here. Okay. Again, it bounces back with speed of u0 by alpha at an same angle theta. Again, it follows this projectile motion, then bounces back with speed of u0 by alpha square at the same angle theta. It keeps on going like this and follows a large number of uh, collisions. Okay, and uh, bounces infinite times. Okay. Now the question also says that uh, when it hits the ground for the first time, uh, sorry, uh, for the resulting projectile motion, the magnitude of average velocity of the ball up to the point when it hits the ground for the first time is V1. So when it starts from here, it hits the ground over here. So for this journey, for this journey, the average velocity is V1. For this first journey, the average velocity is V1. And then it also says that if the magnitude of average velocity of the ball for the entire duration of motion is 0.8 V1, what is the value of alpha? So if it continues for this journey infinite amount of time, then the total average velocity is given to be 0.8 V1. Okay. And then we have to find the value of alpha. So basically we will write down over here that average velocity for first journey is v1 and average velocity for total journey is 0.8 v1 so we have to find alpha this is the summary of the question okay now first of all let's try to understand what should be the value of v1 so for the first journey the particle starts from here follows this projectile and lands over here so the displacement of the particle is this much. This is the displacement of the particle equal to range. Okay. And the time of flight will be, let's say, uh, small t. Then average velocity for the first journey will be range by time. Right. What is the form, uh, def definition of average velocity? Displacement by time. You start from this point. You land over here. So this is your displacement r so the average velocity should be range by time of flight but along x-axis there is no acceleration involved so the velocity is constant okay so this should be also equal to u naught cos theta correct range is equal to how much velocity along x-axis along horizontal multiplied by time of flight right so average velocity is also equal to u naught cos theta that means v1 is equal to u naught cos theta So this is the average velocity for the first journey, right? Now we have to find the average velocity for the total journey. How do we do that? So for that, let's write the time of flight. So time of flight, time of flight will be 2u0 sine theta by g. Okay. Velocity along y-axis will be 2u0 uh, sine theta. So time of flight will be 2u0 sine theta by g. And range, range is equals to u0 cos theta multiplied by time of flight okay so this is equal to u naught square sine 2 theta by g correct so this is the time of flight for the first journey and range for the first journey now similarly for the second journey since now you start with u naught by alpha so time of flight will be 2 u naught sine theta by g times alpha correct and the range for the second journey will be u naught square by alpha square sine 2 theta by g for the third journey time of flight will be 2 u naught sine theta by g alpha square range will be u naught square by alpha power 4 sine 2 theta by g because that's what is happening right the time of flight is uh, the velocity is getting divided by alpha for every journey. Initial velocity is getting divided by alpha for every journey. So the time of flight is also getting divided by alpha. But the range is getting divided by alpha square for every journey. So the total displacement. Total displacement is what? Total displacement will be 
R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus so on up to infinity. So that will be, let me take u naught square sine 2 theta by g common. So u naught square sine 2 theta by g common. So 1 plus 1 by alpha square plus 1 by alpha power 4. 1 plus 1 by alpha square plus 1 by alpha power 4 and so on. So this is a geometric progression with the common ratio 1 by alpha square. This is the geometric progression. Correct. So the total displacement will be equal to, let's write down delta x, u naught square sine 2 theta by g divided by 1 minus 1 by alpha square. 1 minus 1 by alpha square. Okay. This is your delta x. I could also write this down as u naught square sine 2 theta alpha square divided by g alpha square minus 1. Okay. And what about the total time? Total time will be t1 plus t2 plus so on. So this is how much? 2 u naught sine theta by g. 2 u naught sine theta by g. 1 plus 1 by alpha plus 1 by alpha square and so on. So the total time delta t will be 2 u naught sine theta by g 1 minus 1 by alpha. So this is 2 u naught alpha sine theta by g 1 minus alpha. So that's it now find the average velocity. So the average velocity will be average velocity will be delta x by delta t. Okay, so delta x is alpha square u naught square sine 2 theta alpha square u naught square sine 2 theta by g times alpha square minus 1 and I need to make one correction this will be alpha minus 1 okay and divided by delta t right so 2 u naught alpha sine theta and the numerator g alpha minus 1 okay so when you rearrange this I will write sine 2 theta as 2 sine theta cos theta all right so you will get this to be equal to uh, alpha u naught cos theta divided by alpha plus 1 right alpha square and alpha we get only alpha then we get u naught sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta so 2 sine theta will cancel out okay g is getting cancelled out then alpha square minus 1 is what alpha minus 1 into alpha plus 1 so alpha minus 1 will get cancelled out and we are left with alpha plus 1 okay and average velocity according to question is equal to 0 0.8 v1 according to question average velocity is 0 0.8 v1 0 0.8 v1 okay and v1 is u naught cos theta so u naught cos theta is v1 so alpha v1 by alpha plus 1 that means 0 0.8 alpha plus 0 0.8 is equal to alpha so 0 0.8 is equal to 0 0.2 alpha so alpha is equal to 4 